All right, and now to my favorite table. This is where we get to experiment with stuff. This is where we get to check stuff out and see what works and what doesn't. So my clients come to me and they say, Jesse, I've got all these GoPros. I can, at a concert, clip them right onto the drum set or the neck of a guitar, you know, put them in interesting places, but I don't want to just you know, use them for post-production. I want to mix these cameras live into my, into my show. You know, maybe you are operating a, a, a house of worship, a church facility, and you can't really have a handheld camera operator standing behind the pastor, but you still want to get an over-the-shoulder shot. You can mount a GoPro right behind, but how are you going to get that camera live into your HD switcher? And today, my friends, we have the answers for you. All right? First and foremost, if you're using a switcher, more than likely it's going to have HDSDI inputs. If you are still operating a switcher and it has no HDSDI outputs, make sure to call your friends at Midtown Video so that we can get you upgraded because that's just the best way to run stuff. All right? Take my word for it. Verge, if you can jump into Media Edit 1 for me, please. What you're looking at here is uh, obviously our main camera and then the inputs of my PMW 200 on the, on the table here and my GoPro, GoPro Series 3 Black camera. All right, that's your awesome 2K, 4K, badass GoPro camera for $399. The other camera next to it is a $6,200 camera. So we're talking a big difference in price. But notice they're both connected to my TriCaster. How so? Well, the PMW 200 has HDSDI output, so it could go direct. But for the purposes of today's comparison, I happen to be using... HDMI output of the PMW 200, to be fair. HDMI out of the PMW 200, HDMI out of the GoPro. Hello, GoPro. All right. What we have here are two HDMI to SDI converters. That's because my TriCaster 8000, although it does 8,000 million things, it does not accept HDMI as an input. So just like your TriCaster 455, 8000, 855, you know, your Panasonic cameras, Panasonic makes some excellent switchers too, um, 4A, Everybody out there makes HDSDI switchers. Those are the switchers you ought to be using, but they're not compatible with these GoPros because these GoPros put out an HDMI signal. So our friends from AJA and our friends from Blackmagic both have competing HDMI to HDSDI converters. The Blackmagic is famously inexpensive at $295. The Aja is unfairly thought of as more expensive. List price $345. If you call your friends at Midtown Video, $312. So a difference of really $25. Bucks. What is the real difference between these, cam uh, these HDMI to SDI converters? Well, that answer happens when we switch these HDMI cables. Right now, the PMW200 feeds the Blackmagic. Right now, the GoPro feeds the Aja. When I switch the HDMI cables, we're going to lose signal out of our two converters, but I'm going to plug them back in. So now the PMW200 feeds my Aja converter, and the GoPro is feeding my Blackmagic converter. What do you notice? One of these converters works, and one of these does not. So the big secret is we've tried as hard as we can, even spending a half an hour and 45 minutes on hold with tech support, trying to get the Blackmagic HDMI to SDI converter. All I want to say is if you're looking to con uh, convert your Blackmagic if you're looking to convert your GoPro camera to an HDSDI switcher, please go with our recommendation of the $30 more expensive AJA HDMI to SDI converter. Why do I say that? Well, because it works. And to show you there's no tricks, we're going to switch them back. So Blackmagic HDMI to HDSDI converter, perfectly good on cameras like Sony's PMW200. Aja, however, is good on the 200 and more importantly, good on the GoPro. So. What do you need to get your GoPro connected to a switcher? Number one, the skeleton housing. Uh, let's let's get rid of the uh, get rid of this stuff, please, for the time being. Uh, number one, a skeleton housing. Check this out on camera one. The skeleton housing has holes cut out so that I can connect not just my HDMI cable right in the hole there, but also a USB cable in case I need to connect this to a wall for an extra long show. So number one, get yourself a GoPro Black. Number two, get yourself a skeleton housing. Number three. Get their HD micro to HDMI cable. And number four, get yourself an Aja HA5 from Midtown Video for $312.50. You then have the capacity to take your GoPro Black through an HDMI to HDSDI converter right into your HDSDI switcher. But Jesse, you might be saying, my switcher has an HDMI input. Fantastic. Great for you. How long is your HDMI cable? Your HDSDI cable can run 295 feet. 
fantastic. What if you're a little further away than 295 feet? Or what if you don't have an HDSDI switcher? You only have an HDMI switcher. We still have a solution for you. Our friends at Atlona and our friends at Geffen and our friends at Intellex all make competing HDMI over Cat5 converters. So you would take your HDMI cable into a transmitter, Cat5 or Cat6 or whatever, up to about 330 feet to the receiver. The receiver takes the Cat5 in and gives you an HDMI out so you can connect it directly to a switcher. Pretty fantastic. Even cooler, all right, we used to be uh, having to plug in both the transmitter and the receiver into AC power. But lately, these guys are coming out with really smart products. You can power the receiver end and feed power to the transmitter end over your Cat6 cable or Cat5 cable or whatever it is. So if you're about 300 feet away and you don't have SDI, you only have HDMI, talk to your buddies at Midtown Video. We will get you hooked up. All right? Thank you.